My name is Robert Edgar. In this video, I'm going to show you how to analyze 16S data with USearch. You will learn how to assemble paired reads, filter bad reads, generate OTU sequences, and create an OTU table. I'll be running USearch on reads from the Kozic et al. 2013 paper, which describes the mother dual indexing strategy for MySeq. These are paired reads, so for each sample there is an R1 FASTQ file for the forward reads and an R2 file for the reverse reads. There are four samples, each sequenced in three replicates, human gut, mouse gut, soil, and a mock community with 21 strains. There are 5 gigabytes of raw data, which you search processes in about 3 minutes on my PC. To follow along, you need to know how to use the Linux command line to work with text files and scripts. If you have a Mac, then the terminal app gives you a Linux environment, and under Windows you can use Sigwin. I call the project COS, short for COSICH. I set my shell prompt to show the current directory so that we can always see where we are. I created three subdirectories, fq for the fastq files, out for the output files, and scripts for the scripts that run the analysis. I set the usearch environment variable to the full path name of the usearch binary file. Let's look at some data. Here is the project directory. Here are the subdirectories I talked about. So we'll go into the FQ directory and here are the FASTQ files. So one of the first things I usually do is use the fast, fastx info command, which gives us a quick overview of what's in a FASTA or a FASTQ file. So here we see uh, the read lengths, most of which are 251 as usual. And here we see the quality of the reads measured by the number of expected errors. In other words, the most probable number of errors in each read according to its Q scores. And here we see a, this is a pretty decent read quality. We've got an average of about 2.0 errors per read. And quite often the R2 reads are worse, so let's check those two. And not too bad. So we see here they're just slightly worse, 2.2 errors per read, but not bad at all. These are V4 reads, which are supposed to overlap over almost their full length. The next thing to try is to make sure that they assemble. So the command for assembling paired reads is fastq merge pairs. And we'll just pick the first file. The R2 file name is uh, just figured out automatically by usearch. And let's see how that goes. So we see that 53% of the reads merged. And the ones that didn't, most of those had too many mismatches in the alignment, too many diffs. And you can see the default is five. And that's a little bit low. So let's try increasing the allowed number of differences, which we do with the FASTQ max diffs option. And we should also increase the max diff percent. And let's see how that does. So now we get 76% of the reads merging. And I'm happy with that, so I'm going to use that parameter in the analysis. Now I'm ready to make the first script. So I go into the scripts directory. I use my text editor. I like to use VI. And the first step is to merge the paired read. So I'm going to call the script merge. And I always use this thing called a shebang in the first line of the script. This makes sure that the correct program runs the script. You don't absolutely have to have it, but I do it as kind of a good habit. 
And the command we're going to run is usearch fastq merge pairs. And I'm going to use a shorthand here to merge everything all in one go. And we need to be in the fq directory. And we're going to relabel. And then this is another little shorthand. It means it takes the sample names from the fastq file name and embeds those in the relabel. So that's kind of a handy feature for making sure we get the OTU table at the end with the samples and the reads correctly mapped. And we need the max def 10 and max def percent 10 that we decided we liked. And uh, there's another little detail with this data that I didn't mention, which is it's actually got a mixture of reads made with different primers. So we need to select the V4 reads. And the way to do that is to set a length range. So the minimum length, I'm going to set at 230. And the maximum length at 270. And that's going to pick out the V4 reads. And I need an output file name. And we're going to say fastq output into the output directory. And we're going to call that merged.fq. So we save the script. We make it executable. And we try running it. So as you can see, this takes a couple of minutes. Not too bad for five gigabytes worth of data. And it's finished. So you can see the final answer is that 35% merged, and that's because of the length range. Because if you remember, I told you that um, it's a mixture of made with different primers, and these that are longer than 270, those most of those are made with other primers. So this is the re result we expect to see. It's not a problem that only 35% of them were merged. We also see that the number of expected errors in the merged reads is much lower than with the forward and reverse reads alone because when you have when the uh, when the reads agree then we have higher confidence in the base call and so uh, we're seeing a higher quality in the merged reads which is what we would expect let's go over to the output directory and see what we got so here are the merged reads. And if we use the less command to look into the file, we can see here are the reads, here are the base calls, here are the quality scores. And because we use that relabel command, now we have the sample identifier, the sample name embedded in the relabel. So this is human one, read number one, human one, read number two, and so on. And uh, usearch will use those labels to generate the OTU table at the end of the pipeline. So the next step after merging is quality filtering. And the way we do this is I'm going to make another script called filter. And put the shebang. And the usearch command. Now the command is called fastq filter. The input file is merged.fq. And we're going to say that the maximum number of expected errors we want is 1. So um, this means that almost all the reads that we get out of the filter will have an expected number of errors less than 1, which, of course, when you round is 0. So most of the, most of the reads that you get from this filtering should have no errors. Um, in practice, about one third of them have an error, one or more errors, and about two thirds of them are free of errors. And the output file, in fact, now we can go to fast A. We don't need the quality scores anymore. So we'll say a fast A output file. And now it's 
filter.fa, save the script, make it executable, and notice that I use dot slash in front of the script name that makes that tells the shell that the script is in the current directory. If you don't do that, you may get a command not found error because the current directory isn't in your path. And so we're filtering the reads. We notice that more than 90% of them pass the filter. And we're done. So we see 97% pass the filter, which is of course very good. And then we look at the output directory. Now we see we have the filtered reads. After filtering, the next step is finding the unique sequences, it's sometimes called dereplication, kind of an ugly word. So we'll just call this uniques for the next script. There's the shebang. And the usearch command is called fastx uniques to find the unique sequences. So the input is the filtered reads. And the output we'll call uniques.fa. It's a fast A file. And we're going to relabel unique. So the reads are going to be called unique1, unique2, and so on. And we need this option called size out. That puts an annotation in the fast A file that tells you how many uniques there are in, the, in that cluster, how many copies of that unique sequence there are, and that's needed for the next command. So we'll make it executable and run it. So here we go. Now we have our unique sequences. And if we look at the file, you'll see here they are. They're labeled unique one, unique two, and so on. And this tells you how many sequences, how many reads had that exact sequence. And they're actually sorted in order of decreasing abundance. So this is the most unique one is the most abundant. Unique two is the second most abundant and so on. So after finding the uniques, we're ready to cluster. And let's just call this OTUs. There's the shebang. And the command is cluster OTUs. The input file is the unique sequences. And we're going to discard the singleton sequences because those are quite likely anomalies. They may have a large number of read errors despite the filtering. They may be chimeras and so on. So we're going to say min size 2. So that, keep, that discards the singleton sequences and keeps all of the read sequences where we have at least two copies. And the output file. We'll call that otus.fa, and let's relabel again. And we're going to, going to call the, the otus otu1, otu2, and so on. And we need to make it executable. And we'll run it. takes just a minute or two. Here you go. Done. That took 11 seconds. And here is the result. So now you can see we have the OTU sequences, OTU1, OTU2. And how many OTUs did we get? Well, I've forgotten what the program said. So. We can count the number of FASTA labels, and you can see we've got about 5,000 OTUs. So the final step is to make the OTU table.
is the shebang. Now, the way to make an OTU table is to use the usearch global command. It's basically a database search problem. And the input is the reads before filtering, because if a read matches an OTU, then we're happy to map it, even if it doesn't, didn't have the best quality. So we're going to use the merged reads as the input to the mapping. The database is the OTUs. We only want to try matching on the plus strand. We always have to say that for a nucleotide search. The sequence identity is 97%. And the output file that we want is OTU tab now. OTU table dot txt. And if I didn't make any typos, so that should do it. We'll make it executable. Oops. Go to your table and we'll run it. You see, almost 80% of the reads are matching. So the, the reads that don't, those are very likely to be low quality reads or chimeras. And if we go here, here is the OTU table, we have the OTUs are the rows and the samples are the columns. And that's the fundamental data structure that you get out of OTU analysis is the OTU table. This is the thing that you use to do your alpha and beta diversity analysis and so on. Now I'm going to put all the pieces together. The reason uh, I made a separate script for each command is when you're actually doing this in practice, it can take a little bit of trial and error to fix the typos, get the parameters that you want. You're going to maybe go back and forth a little bit between the command line and reviewing the output files. And that allows you to work on each command separately. And then when you're done, you can make one script that calls each of these steps and it makes sure that you've got a complete pipeline that reproduces the results where you know all the parameters. So the way you can do this is, let's call the script run. And we're going to start by making sure that there's nothing left over from a previous run. That's why I keep the output files in a directory that's separate from everything else. Then the steps are merge, filter, find the unique sequences, cluster the OTUs, and make an OTU table. Make this executable. And now I could run this script and it would reproduce everything from scratch. Thank you for watching. For more information, visit drive5.com slash usearch.